from the time when VSI approached me with the idea of the app to the point now where it is available, it's amazing to see the output of this. It's such a professionally created app with such a methodical basis, with the very strong foundations of the teaching of Oxford mindfulness delivered in piecemeal uh, chunks that allows people to gain access to mindfulness teachings. I've been just so impressed by it all and particularly grateful that this means that there will be wider access for people with visual snow syndrome to get access to the concepts and the practices of mindfulness, which is an introduction to the eight week program. The benefits of the app would be the wide accessibility and the high quality teachings from Oxford Mindfulness on the app will set somebody on a good path with learning the skill sets. The benefits of doing this in person would be more personalized guidance for the discussion and the direct feedback when somebody practices their mindfulness uh, skills on how they can hone it further to ensure that they're doing it in an appropriate way for their benefits. MBCT is delivered as a group learning program. So people meet in groups, whether in person or online, and every week they learn new themes and new tools and they come together to discuss their practices of their experience of their practices, the challenges, and they get um, some guidance from their practice week on week. The app is really a introduction to mindfulness in a very methodical and high quality way for people to gain access to some tools within their own, um, at their own time without necessarily being limited to attending in a specific group format. Uh, it is, I would say, a form of introduction to mindfulness and that may spur people on to sign up to eight week programs, whether it's MBCT or similar to MBCT type programs in a group format. It is not a replacement for one-on-one -on -one therapy or in a group learning program. And of course, when people train with somebody directly, there is more personalized guidance uh, whenever there are challenges and perhaps with accountability of showing up to sessions, those are, I would say, the key differences. For people who are not uh, yet finding benefits of using the app for their visual snow syndrome, I would say keep an open mind and also have an overall bigger view picture here. The app is not a replacement for the care from their doctor. It's not the, a replacement for a therapist for people who needs it. It's not a replacement for in-person uh, support. So, and there are lots of factors that could be affecting somebody's visual snow syndrome. So there is a bigger picture here that will oftentimes need to be considered. And to think of mindfulness, whether it's through the app or through an in-person support uh, group learning as an extra tool in the toolkit to manage and get better from visual snow syndrome. I think it was amazing what the VSI has done with lobbying for visual snow syndrome being part of the ICD. It changes everything, I think, in terms of healthcare delivery and funding for treatment. For it to be recognized as its own entity is the start of us, yes, delivering care better, improving recognition of this condition, and also moving forward research in this area to benefit more people with visual snow syndrome. So it's amazing what has been happening with the ICD so one of the aspects of my current research with the randomized control trial is that we are doing qualitative research as well um, to understand better people's experience of having visual snow syndrome. And a key thing that's coming out so far, and of course I'm still doing research in this, is that it's not known, it's not acknowledged, 
and people are have, having a lot of difficulties to have their conditions recognized or diagnosed. And I think having this recognized on ICD is really important for people who have this condition for us to be able to identify how many people are presenting with these symptoms and it's certainly an important part of driving forward research in this area. So that would really help um, people with visual snow syndrome and is a real game changer in the landscape of things moving forward. So from the time when I first uh, got to know VSI, I've been tremendously touched by the ethos and the approach of the organization of really deeply caring for people with visual snow syndrome and empowering them. I was so touched by the story of Sierra, of how she started it, really inspiring what has come out of this. And also recently I read her blog about her journey to date and I've been so touched. It's been amazing to see how much Sierra has been doing for the visual snow syndrome community from her work advocating for people with visual snow syndrome to her so honestly sharing her journey and what has happened is tremendously inspiring for people who have the condition. Her TED talk, her advocacy for the ICD, her work through the social uh, channels, through the websites, collating practitioners, championing research, championing care, it's been incredible.